In this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create this pop art effect using PhotoP. To get started on the tutorial, you will need a few bits and pieces. Before jumping into PhotoP, you will need, first of all, a picture of yourself against a plain backdrop. I've got an example of a chick here in front of a green screen, which will work fine. If you don't have a green screen, that's okay. Just get a photo of yourself in front of a plain colored wall. Uh, the other thing you're going to need is a picture of a texture. And the way I find textures is just jump onto Google Images and search up texture. I actually search for rustic texture in this example and um, with all the rustic textures you've got heaps to pick from so just click on one you like and right click and save that image onto your computer. Once you've got those two things you are ready to go so jump on over to photop.com and create yourself a new project. The name of today's project is going to be called Pop Art, so just write that into the first box and then set your sizes to 1200 by 1200 pixels. Now your DPI stands for dots per inch. If you're just using this online, stick with 72 dots per inch. That's what I'm going to use today. But if you would like to print your Pop Art out, you do want to change that to 300 DPI. That just means it will print at better quality and come out nice and crisp from the printer. Uh, but once you've got those settings all in place, we can click Create and we've got an empty white canvas on our screen. That's the first thing we need to do. Second thing we need to do is go to File and New one more time. We're going to make a second new image. This time we might just call it uh, Model. And we're going to half the size to 600 by 600 pixels. We'll stick with whatever DPI we used before. So I used 72, so I'm going to stick with that. If you use 300, change it to 300. And click on Create. And you'll now have two tabs open. The pop art itself, which is going to be the four different um, boxes in a moment. And then we've got the model image just here. Sticking with the model image, what we're going to do is actually bring in the picture of our model or yourself. So just go to File and Open and Place. Find the picture of yourself and bring it into this document. You will need to grab a corner and stretch it out so that it fills up the entire square there. That's about the size I am looking for. Hit the tick when you're happy with that. And the first thing we're going to do is jump on over to our layers panel where we've got the portrait layer here or whatever it's called on yours. And we're going to right click on it and convert that to a smart object which will allow us to put some adjustments onto this um, image. It's basically going to make those pop art kind of effects. Uh, so from here, we're going to keep this layer selected and go up to the layer menu at the top and add in a, a new adjustment layer. We're going to go down near the bottom and choose threshold. And if you play around with this slider, you'll see you'll get different effects. You start to see that pop art effect working here. Well, what I'm looking for is for this black background to disappear. So we've got a white background. So just move that slider along until you find that sweet spot where that black background has disappeared but you've still got some detail in the person. So looking at the face here, I can still see the eyes, make out a bit of the nose and the mouth. That's the sort of look I'm going for. Okay, if I went up any higher, it's not really going to change it. So I'm going to stick with 113 for my threshold. Yours may be different. Just depends what your image looks like. So just play around with that slider until you get something looking a bit like this. All right, if you need to, you can get your brush tool over here and change the color to white. And you can actually rub out any black bits you're not happy with by using your paintbrush there. But I'm happy with mine, so I don't actually need to get rid of any black bits. Uh, the next thing I'm gonna do is, again, uh, make sure this top layer is selected, so that threshold adjustment layer. Make sure that's selected in your layers panel, and we're gonna go up and add another adjustment layer in. So we've got a layer, new adjustment layer, and we're gonna add in, just below threshold, we've got gradient map. Okay, so please add that in. Now from this drop-down box, you've got a heap of different presets. I need you to make sure you've selected this black and white one to start with, so that it fades from black into white. Now with that selected, what I want you to do is click on this color box itself, and it will bring up the gradient editor. With the gradient editor, you can now add color into this image. So the first color, where it's black, just double click on that for me. Color picker will come up. Let's move it around and choose a slightly um, slightly lighter color. So we're not going to go completely black. It's a very dark gray though. So you can see the difference between the two colors is very subtle. Uh, but we're not going to go fully black. 
And for the second color on our slider here, which is currently white, double click on that little white box. And I want you to choose a bright color. So I'm going to start with pink. Click OK. And then I'll click OK. And just press this little button here to get rid of that properties box. All right, so that is the first part of our pop art artwork. This is what we're going to do now to get it over to this document, which is going to be the big one. Um, we're going to highlight, actually, looking in my layers here, this background layer is doing nothing, so I'm actually going to hit the trash can on that and delete it. It's these three layers that we want to keep. But to copy and paste it over to this document, we actually need to highlight those three layers and right-click on them and choose Flatten Image. That just combines all those three layers, all the effects, into one. Now, I don't know if this is going to work. We'll give it a go. We're going to copy this image while it's selected. And we'll go and paste it over to this new document. Now, that's come in. It's actually just hiding behind the original background layer. So I'm going to delete this background layer because we don't need it. And there you can see we have the first part of our pop art image working nicely. Going back to the Model tab now, what I'm going to do is go to Edit and Undo. And you'll see that my layers come back here, which is exactly what I wanted. Now, this gradient map, if we double click on this little square here, we can edit that gradient map and change that color pink out. So double click on the pink and choose something else like a bright yellow. And click OK a couple of times there and you'll see you've got a completely different looking image. Now I'm going to repeat the process of what I did before. I'm going to hold shift and just click on this on these layers until they're all selected. I'll right click my mouse and flatten the image. Now that they're all combined into one layer, I can go and copy that layer, pop back over to my original artwork and edit paste that in. Now if I move this around, you can see what's happening. These all fit perfectly into this space. I might get those two down the bottom. And I'm going to go back to my uh, model over here and I'm going to undo the flattening. I'm going to double click on this little square in the gradient map and click on this color bar and change it again from yellow to, let's go green. That looks pretty good. I'm going to highlight all three layers again and right click to flatten the image copy it and I will paste it back to the original looks good and one final one to go so I'm gonna just undo those um, that flattening double click on the gradient map and change it to a bright blue so cyan is the color I'm looking at there for the final time I'm gonna right click I oh, sorry highlight all the layers right click and flatten the image Copy and paste it over to the original one last time. And you can now start to see our pop art um, effect coming into play. Now the next thing we're going to do is put a texture over the top of it. So we might uh, need to make a new layer here. So it's going to be called layer 1 and I might double click on the name of the layer 1 and change it to texture. Okay now, going up to edit, oh, it's not edit, sorry, File, we're going to go Open and Place, and we're going to select the texture that we got off the internet. Just stretch it out so it fills up the whole page. Um, I might stretch it out quite big here and just move it over a bit so I've got a bit of this rough looking texture sitting on top of my image. That looks good, so I'll press the tick on that. Now what we're going to do is blend this texture in with the rest of our image. Okay, so I'm looking at my layers panel over here. This texture layer that I just added in looks like we don't need it, so I'm just going to bin that. Now clicking back on this texture itself, you can go through all these different blending modes here. And you can see that some of them look better than others. And as you go through them, you need to pick one that you think is going to work the best on your image. Now they're quite harsh at the moment, um, so it's just a matter of, I might go back to the linear burn actually, that one wasn't too bad. Now, as you can see it's kind of ruined our image, but what we're going to do is next to these blending modes, we've got the opacity, which is how transparent the layer is. If we drop this opacity down to somewhere, say 25 to 30 percent area, so I'm at about 25 percent there, it makes it a real subtle effect. So if I zoom in, you can see the texture on top of the image, that rough kind of 
stone look, but it's subtle now. So it gives that um, image a little bit more detail, I guess, gives it a little bit of edge. And that's it, that's your pop art image completed. So that wasn't too hard. What you'll do now to finish it off is just go to File, and if you want to come back and edit it later with all these different layers, you'd save it as a PSD file. That's a large file though, so I'm going to go to Export As and choose either PNG or JPEG. I'm going to go with PNG. I might leave the quality about 100%. You can drop it a little bit if you want to save some room on your computer, but 100% is fine. Then click Save. Um, so having to whinge about my ad blocker, but that's okay. And it downloads the image. If I click on it, there it is. We've now opened up our completed pop art drawing. Okay, so that is how you create some pretty cool artwork quite easily using Photopea.